Welcome back. One of the most common abdominal surgeries is exploratory laparotomy, or in short, XLAP. Now, just to be clear, just because the surgical procedure is named this way, it must not be confused with the flank surgical approach. In this case, ciliotomy and laparotomy are used interchangeably. This topic is very intensive. It's quite long. It's divided into a five-part video. So sit back, relax, or at least try to get some snacks because this is a long discussion. Let's get right at it. This is Primo, seven-year-old, castrated male, Chihuahua, presented to your clinic after sudden leth lethargy and inhabitants. They also noted that Primo's abdomen acutely distended overnight. So what do we do to this patient? What would you do if you were the veterinarian? Probably by now you're shouting, Doc, we need more info. <laughs> well, for you to get info, you need to ask questions. What questions would you ask the clients about this case? Think on that. Just looking at it, you are faced with quite a complicated case. You get history, do your physical exam. Still, you have a lot of differential diagnosis in mind. Nothing is narrow, narrowed down. What do you do next after history and physical exam? You ruled out a blood. Uh, you ruled out a cardiac condition. Actually, in this case, I think Primo's just fat. But let's say his abdomen is distended for another reason. I can't find another picture of a cute dog with a very big tummy. So what do you do next? Blood tests? Check the liver and kidney panel? Good? Good choices. But what if it's still inconclusive? Now you decide to do radiologic imaging. You do a lateral radiograph of the abdomen. And what, what will you see? I'm not expecting you to um, interpret this because I know not all of you are done with um, radiology already. So I'll omit that from my discussion. So if you are able to diagnose it at this point, good for you. But I'm saying you can't. So you choose to do an ultrasound. You visualize the liver. See the gallbladder. And see, hmm, is that a mass lesion? A hyperechoic area on the liver, wherein it should be a very uniform appearance of the parenchyma? I'm not going to, to the details of radiology because you have a separate subject for that. Note, you cannot interpret an ultrasound image if you were not the one who did it. This is a real-time interpretation for ultrasound. You interpret it as you see it. It's complicated, but it's really cool. I like it. So those who took radio, you know this. Those who are taking it this semester, you're in for a wild ride. You learn a lot. Okay, back to our lecture. You do all these diagnostic methods. If you find something definitive, then hey, yay. Lucky you, lucky dog. You can proceed to treatment. But what if you can't? What if it's still not enough? But if you still have a long list of differential diagnosis that needs to be narrowed down, then maybe you can decide if exploratory laparotomy is indicated. When an animal is deemed to need exploratory laparotomy to find out what the problem is, this surgery takes on a diagnostic nature. Doing an X-lap entails the systematic assessment of the entire abdominal cavity and its contents to determine a definitive diagnosis in patients suspected of abdominal organ dysfunction or trauma. This assessment is done through visual inspection, palpation, and mucosa or serosa observation. It also presumes that the surgeon has a very good grasp of the normal anatomy to make sure that any displacement or malpositioning is noted and corrected. 
However, there are two general indications of exploratory laparotomy, diagnostic and therapeutic. Let's take therapeutic first. If your preliminary examination on the patient reveals any of the following, um, intra-abdominal hemorrhage, visceral obstruction, a mass lesion, which is indicative of neoplasia, abnormal fluid accumulation, which is a non-cardiogenic uh, in nature, and peritoneal contamination, which were in you um, aspirate fluid full of bacteria and inflammatory cells. That is a sign of peritonitis and actually requires the animal to be opened as soon as possible. So if you have these indications already, XLAP will be a therapeutic surgery. However, another indication of XLAP is diagnostic, wherein the surgery is performed to supplement a diagnosis. For example, you see an ultrasound, there is a questionable mass on the liver. You may do an XLAP to see the organ itself and collect biopsy samples. You can also do culture and antibiotic sensitivity testing on areas wherein there are signs of persistent infection. Lastly, it is indicated for an acute abdomen. What is an acute abdomen? Let's find out. An acute abdomen is the sudden onset of abdominal pain or discomfort accompanied by abdominal distension, anorexia, lethargy, gastrointestinal signs such as vomiting and diarrhea, and the patient being in various stages of shock. Since this condition is manifested by a variable set of clinical signs, it is a diagnostic challenge. More often than not, th these conditions are emergent and critical once the patient is showing clinical signs. The differential diagnosis for this condition are outlined in this table. As you can see, it is a very big list of conditions, which you need to narrow down to find the exact problem and to give the appropriate treatment. And one way of doing that, if your diagnostic imaging and your laboratory tests are in vain, the only way of doing that is to do an exploratory laparotomy. The term exploratory means that everything that happens after all that you do depends on what you see inside. And there is a possibility that a condition may be worse than we initially thought. It could also be unresolved if you do not see anything definitive. This fact needs to be communicated to the client so they can manage their expectations. Some clients would think that when you go into XLAP, the problem will automatically be seen and treated. It's not always in that kind of scenario. You have to manage their expectations so that they know that this surgery is not always therapeutic in nature, but may aid you in establishing a diagnos diagnosis. Preoperative concerns include physical examination and doing blood tests being done as early as possible after presentation. Those patients who are in shock needs to be stabilized along with those with cardiovascular compromise. Diagnostic imaging techniques such as x-ray and ultrasound are depending on the presenting signs. Your knowledge on interpreting x-ray films and technical experience in doing an ultrasound is of utmost importance. Patients in pain must be given adequate analgesia. How do we know if a dog or a cat is in pain? How do we know? They cannot speak. What are the clinical signs or clinical manifestations rather of pain? You review our lecture on pain management. One clinical manifestation of pain is the praying position. Though I think this guy is not in pain. It's too cute. If this is done by a patient recurrently and does not seem to just be stretching, sometimes it is said by uh, a lot of veterinarians that this is a sign of pancreatitis pancreatitis which is a very
painful disease. For the surgical instruments and materials that you will need, basically you need everything. You need a lot because you do not know what you will be seeing inside the abdomen. You have no certainty or sure thing once you enter that abdomen. So you better be ready for anything. You will need a full surgical set supplemented with laparotomy pads, irrigation syringes, and warm sterile saline. For the gauze sponges, you might notice that this one sorry, has a blue strip. So you can see here, there's this line in the middle of the gauze. These are x-ray detectable gauze sponges. If these are accidentally left inside the body, you will be able to see where it is with an x-ray because it will light up. This is also why an abdominal x-ray is routinely done after an invasive abdominal surgery. Also, you must do a swab count. A swab count is simply counting how many gauze sponges you have before you start the surgery and whenever additional gauzes are opened during the surgery. The gauze sponges are again counted once you are ready to close the abdomen. For example, if you started out with 20 gauze sponges, you must have 20 gauze sponges with you before you close. If you only have 18, then you better find out where the remaining two are. Also, in cases wherein there is free fluid inside and you anticipate this already, you must be ready with a suction tip and a hose connected to a suction machine to fully evacuate the fluid from the abdomen. There are different kinds of suction tips and they differ on the appearance of their ends. The pool suction tip has a cylindrical body made up of two rods. This is the main suction tip connected to the suction hose right here. And this guard is screwed in around this rod. And as you can see, this cylindrical body is full of holes along its length. The hole in this smaller rod is just here, as you can see. This is usually used for abdominal surgeries. The Yankower tip, which is a very common suction tip for both medical doctors, veterinary doctors, and dentists. The Yankower tip has a spherical tip with a semi-flattened end. This is preferred for suctioning around parenchymatous tissue, like the liver. This is also used to prevent any unnecessary damage to the areas wherein there is fragile tissue. This is also available in plastic disposable forms, which is the one used by the dentist and medical doctors to suction fluids out of the mouths of patients when doing their surgeries or when they are taking care of those patients with respiratory problems like the timely COVID-19 to remove fluids and phlegm which accumulates and tends to block the airway. For orthopedic and neurosurgery, the Fraser suction tip is used to um, suck the blood out of small spaces such as in between bone fragments, inside the joint capsules, or even in between the sulci of the brain during craniotomies. This is a, quite a semi-pointed tip. This is also the choice for spinal cord surgeries like a hemilaminectomy. To effectively visualize the abdominal contents, the abdominal wall is best retracted laterally by the Balfour retractor. The two side blades pull and hold the side blades here, pull and hold the left and right abdominal walls laterally. This is secured in that position by the screw in the middle. The spoon pulls the siphoid area cranially effectively visualize the liver and the diaphragm. The image on the right shows how to properly place a Balfour retractor. Side blades retracting the lateral walls. The spoon 
can be used in both the cranial and the caudal aspect. Um, just going by fast, the phenocchietto retractor is used for thoracic surgeries to retract the ribs and expose the lungs and the heart. In case anyone asks, um, are there any other retractors that are available? There are a ton more of retractors which aid our surgeries to effect effectively visualize the surgical area. We will discuss each one as we go through the course in discussing the surgeries in the different body systems. To see how these instruments are used in a real case, watch this video of a patient presented in shock and with internal hemorrhage. It was found that the bleeding comes from the spleen and it was decided that the patient will need an x lab to assess the damage. Focus on the instruments and supplies used during this surgery. For our next lecture, we will be discussing the different surgical approaches employed in an x lab and the important anatomical structures outside of the abdominal cavity that you need to focus on. One note on the video assignment. I included a card on this side, on the upper right corner of the video, if you are watching this in YouTube to um, efficiently link you this video already. So one click on that area, then you will automatically be rerouted or redirected to this video. Only if you are watching this in YouTube. All right, see you in our next lecture.